space, the boundary of human achievement, the new frontier. Mm. <coughs> it's just a cop. Yeah, right. And the earth is flat. Ah! Ah! Treat your cough seriously with Robitussin CF Max. Nothing lasts longer and treats more symptoms for your cough, cold, and flu. Robitussin, because it's never just a cough. In a few moments, you will have an experience which will seem completely real. It will be the result of your subconscious fears transformed to your conscious awareness. Warning, this tape must not be played by government personnel. It can be extremely harmful and result in severe trauma. You have five seconds to terminate this tape. Five, four, Three, two, one. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. Lexi, tell us something interesting. Okay, the earth is flat and a witch stole his pants. Yeah. Flat Earth expert Mark Sargent thinks the moon landing was a hoax. Technically, the moon itself is a hoax. Right, but betting with Sportsbet's new iPhone app? I could do this standing on my head. Thanks, Gravity. Sportsbet's new iPhone app. It's foolproof. Oh, hold on. I know how we're different. Do you believe the Earth is flat? I know it's flat. I walk on it. Holy, Holy sh**. Flat, I know the earth is flat, it's a new It's a flat world after all. Smoke weed every day. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently at war with mainstream science. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is stuck in the Ukraine. He forgot to read the fine print. Once you go in, you're not getting out. Little inside story there. We might get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure a thousand miles wide. Just Google Flat Earth Clues if you can't find it. Well, you're just not very good at the internet. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And yes, Caroline, if it is not March 15th, 2022, then you are listening to a rerun. 
Quote of the day goes exactly like these three things, which all have something in common. Can you figure them out? The first one is strike while the iron is hot. The second one is the fruit never falls far from the tree. And the third one is what is on a sober man's mind is on a drunk man's tongue. Where are all these three quotes from? Russia. They're all Russian sayings. Shouldn't surprise anyone. My co-host, she's lovely, she's sassy, and she's one of the biggest flat earth rock stars ever. Karen B. What's going on, Karen? Woo! What's up, Mark? How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Nice, nice, <laughs> uh, nice hoodie you got there. Why, thank you. Very, very nice. Uh, hey, Karen, if you had to recommend one app for people to get in 2022 before, you know, the whole thing starts collapsing around our ears, what would it be? Why, that would be the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Fair enough, yes. It's the perfect app for friends, family, and complete strangers. Watch the featured video every day for two weeks and see what happens. It'll be the best $2.99 you've ever spent. Don't forget, you can also find this program on BitChute and Brighty on Rockfin and Rumble and other social media platforms that haven't been invented yet. YouTube is not the end of Flat Earth. It is just the beginning. Shoutouts. Let's get the shoutouts. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, to your hoodie, Flat Earther Stefan Carpenter of The Deftones. Support the Flat Earth cause and get the coolest hoodies ever, like the one Karen's wearing. Go to the strong.family and check them out, won't you? Also, check out... The QR code, maybe or maybe not on the screen, because I don't see it, yeah. is truthsmacks.com. Spreading truth one delicious morsel at a time. Mmm, truthsmacks. In large bags like this, or possible small bags for your meetup, wherever you may get them. And we are going to talk about the meetups in just a second, because there are a number of them out there. Also, this one Truth is, Smacks is on Amazon now. Did you see that? You know what? Thank you for reminding me. You're absolutely right. Truth Smacks is now on Amazon. I just got I just got that notice. I haven't. Uh, I mean, I clicked on it. I didn't see a price for it yet, though. But hopefully, but again, you can you can order it. Just go to truthsmax.com. All right. Uh, also, big shout out to Ron Lee from Alaska who sent me my birthday. Just so you guys know, is not until the end of April third third. It's April twenty fourth. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, but if you guys want to send me something, my physical address is you know in the description box of every video I make. But she sent me some wonderful stuff, including this cool hat right here. She did not make this herself. I don't know who made this hat. I think it's a production hat. This is a styling crochet Viking helmet hat. Wonderful, wonderful. Also, you guys noticed maybe that I was drumming for the first time with actual – not drumsticks. These are drumsticks that also double, if you're watching the video version, as chopsticks. <laughs> That's called, funny. And they're called um, beat it's. Yeah, beat it's. Beat it's? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how well they sell, but it's awesome. And I got three pairs, and I can use these now to, uh, you know, to, to drum. And you'll see how my rhythm is not so great. Karen's got actual drumsticks which I think she got from the Rolling Stones during one of their farewell tours. And also got this cute – you know what the cute – one of the cutest things I got from, from her and this – you guys can send me anything you want. But it's this little demon, this wind-up demon, and you, you probably can't see this. He's got this little thing in the, the back of him. He craps candy <laughs> when you wind him up. <laughs> so he just walks across the floor and he craps candy behind him. It is one of the weirdest things ever. I like him. I'm not going to get rid of him. It's really, really cool. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to uh, the meetups. There's a few out there. Let's do uh, the Jesse's first one. Jesse's is going to be March 20th from 630 till 9 at the Boston Tavern. That's 1210 Providence Highway, Norwood, Massachusetts. And he will have his P1000 on hand. Please RSVP by calling him at 857-344-6209 or email him at 300kmileprius at gmail.com. Also, uh, Mike is doing one in Chicago at Ace Bounce. That's twenty. So I'm sorry, two thirty North Clark Street, and it's going to be Team Reach Talk Mime Friend Chicago Code six zero six zero one. You can get a hold of him. That's March seventeenth, four to five thirty at eight at Ace Bounce. It's a ping pong place. You can get a hold of him at. Q-W-I-K-A-C-T at M-E dot com. That's Q-W-I 
K-A-C-T at M-E dot com. <clears throat> and the Florida ones. And he said, only read these 16 words. Meetups this weekend in Florida are in Tampa, Jupiter, and Daytona. The schedule is on flatearthfestivals.com. That's right. Under Flat Earth Friendly Meetups. But Florida has its own uh, page. So you can just go to Flat Earth Friendly Meetups. And under the menu, it says Florida Meetups. Florida recurring. <clears throat> right on. And there's, I'm sorry, there's one more because it hasn't happened yet, which is the one in South Africa. That's currently happening right now. Yep, it's currently happening right now. It is the Flat Earth uh, Forest Family Gathering in South Africa starting now. So if you want to check that out, just go to my channel on YouTube and you can see the promo for it. And if you're outside of Cape Town, hey, have a blast. I, I watched some of the, the video stuff. Seems really chill. Yeah. Really, really, really great. It looks like a really cool place that they're in in the forest there. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, I'm happy for, for Dave that he's doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now that's all out of the way. Let's go to the headlines. And we got a whole bunch of them because, as you may or may not know, Americans have the attention span of a goldfish and <laughs> A war that is going on for not even three weeks, that's just too long. So they're going to try to distract you with all sorts of fun stuff. So the first distraction, which is the Ukraine situation, is also being distracted, again, by the virus of unknown origin. <laughs> all right. So first off, let's go to the obvious. There's going to be quite a few Captain Obvious ones uh, during this show. First one is from uh, MSN. Sorry, sorry, the Daily Mail. Tucker Carlson from Fox says the U.S. wanted Russia to invade Ukraine as COVID ended. Yep, pretty much true. I agree with that whole thing. Yes, that's that, that was the point. The, the, the mandates were being rolled back and you need a distraction. And the Ukraine thing has been working perfectly for the last almost three weeks. Can you believe it's only been three weeks? So much they have packed in. All right, moving on. To the next one down, which is, speaking of which, uh, this is from NPR. TSA extends the travel mask mandate through April 18th. It was supposed to expire in three days from now. And they show a nice picture of a few people on an airplane wearing masks. And it, and it was going to, and it will eventually. April 18th, it actually may expire. They may kick it down May, but by April 18th, I think people are, it's going to be one of the last groups to actually have it. Aside from hospitals, I don't know if they're ever going to pull them out of hospitals, but the airlines, they will. Because what's going to happen is April 18th, people are going to be walking up to the checkout counter going, yeah, so I haven't had to wear a mask for weeks, so why now? You're the only place we have yeah. to wear a man. Yeah, it's it's not going to fly. Ah, see what I did there? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, my God. Seriously, my, my ribs. All right. Yeah, no, rim shot. Uh, next one down. Let's go to... Okay, This the reason why this episode is called... I, I really want to dig in, into this one a little bit. The reason why this episode is called Supply and Demand is because there is a hidden trade war happening behind the scenes. It is a hidden distraction, and you really should be aware of what is happening so you aren't blindsided. So the first story here is from MSN, and I, I'm, I, I can't underestimate what I'm going to read here for you. And I'm not, I'm not going to read the article. I'm just going to give you some highlights, and we're going to go to the next thing and the next thing, which is this one's from For, Fortune magazine. Uh, the, the headline is, this has never happened before in the history of the nickel market. A 145-year-old exchange halts trading as price more than doubles, and even they are underselling this. Um Let's go to the very next one, because I'm going to give you the highlights. I'm going to break it down for you, so it's not going to be too hard to understand. Uh, the next one down is just a snapshot from Markets Insider about what's happened in the stock market. So you see up at the top, you see Dow Futures. You know That's today at 33,000. S&P, NASDAQ, gold is sitting about 1920, which is down a little bit. It was almost at 1990. But what's interesting here is nickel is sitting at 42,995, a ton. Because they, they usually deal in tons. <clears throat> that price is from Monday of last week. Okay. What what does that mean? In fact, there's a uh, – I wonder if I – do I have the, the trading document? Do you see that, Karen, right below the um, – uh, right below that, there's a there's a trading document I want to read. Let's see if I can open this real fast. Do you see it? So this is a notice that was sent by the London 
minerals ex metals exchange, right? And it was sent back on March 10th. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down for you really fast. So what happened was last Monday, not yesterday, but last Monday, it got really it's extremely volatile, meaning what happened was Russia, as you may or may not know, Russia is the second leading exporter of nickel in the world next to India. I'm sorry, next to uh, Indonesia. And big players, big billionaire stock players got involved and they thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity. Let's jump in on this sucker. So if you go down to number seven, I'm going to I'm going to cap it for you. So number seven on this little thing from the London's Metal Exchange uh, has been monitoring closely the impact of the evolving situation in Russia and Ukraine, and in particular, the recent low stock environment and high price pricing volatility in the nickel market. During Monday, March 7th, significant upward price movements were observed. However, the, the exchange considered the trading activity up to and including trading on Monday had been orderly. So Monday, eh, we're fine. Seems fine, right? Tuesday, is number eight. During the early hours of trading on the morning of Tuesday, nickel prices moved up significantly in a short period of time. It became clear that pricing in the early hours trading did not reflect the underlying physical market, and the nickel market had become disorderly. Boy, was that under an understatement. The LME therefore took the decision to suspend trading in all nickel contracts immediately. So what happened was the price of nickel per ton doubled and then tripled, and then they panicked and didn't know what to do, they, sh they shut the whole thing down. Number nine, and I'm not gonna read all of this, so I'm just gonna read some highlights. Uh, in the interest of market stability and integrity to cancel all trades executed after midnight on March 8th in the inner office market and on the, on the exchange, cancellations were made retrospectively in order to take the market back to the last point at which the exchange could be confident that the market was operating in an orderly fashion. Short answer, and I've never seen this in the history of exchanges. I don't care if it's gold or silver or whatever. It became a do-over. They canceled all the trading that happened during this time. They said, yeah, so all billions and billions of dollars are being traded in nickel. And everything just exploded. And they said, you know what? We're just shutting the whole thing down. And everyone that traded today, this it's, it's almost like a cheating scandal in school. It, it's all void. It's not going to happen. When has this ever happened in the stock market? How can uh, they just do that, though? Is that are they allowed to? I mean, when it's this much money. Yeah, they can, which is why we get to number 10. You're probably saying, why is, how can you do this? Here's why, right? Because mm -hmm. they had to explain this. Remember, this This is a memo that's never been, has, has never happened in the history of the exchange, going back to the 1800s, right? Well, I mean, if every time something crappy happened in the stock market, you say, oh, let's just do it over. Like, well, you can't that's just... just you, you're right. You can't just do it over, but they explain why, and it's still not a great answer, but you will, you'll get this. This was in part due to the exchange conclusion that the significant price moves during the early hours trading had created a systemic risk to the market, including a relation to margin calls, which means how much money you owe at the end of the day, which, if the exchange had not acted, would have closed at levels far in excess of those ever experienced in the exchange market. The exchange... Uh, um, had serious concerns about the ability of market participants to meet the resulting margin calls, raising the risk of multiple defaults and a consequent reduced ability for market participants to continue to access the market and manage their risk. The whole market was going to implode because there were people, basically people went in to try to short it. They tried to bet against it. And then other people came in to prop it up, and it became this massive bidding war between billionaires. And at the end of the day, there was so much money cha changing hands that, that entire corporations would have – hedge funds would have just been wiped out, which is wiped out. And, and they said it, it, there, it would have created so much more volatility that the next day after that, the Wednesday would have been a nightmare. Say, so, you know what? Tuesday never happened. Never happened. And, okay – one more thing, huh. I got to put this again. What's Karen saying? It's like no, it shouldn't have happened. Not only that, but the very so the number eleven, they said. By the way, we're temporarily not going to publish the official prices and closing prices for the duration while while this thing's suspended. So that number you saw on the screen, that forty-two thousand or whatever it was, that's not even the real number. We're not even going to tell you what the number is. 
because we don't that's know. That's just a number that they're comfortable yeah, posting that was one, as the last known price. Yeah, the last known price on the, um, eight days ago was that, right? And then last but not least, number 12, where they said a number of people have asked about, about the market monitoring and whether the exchange has commenced an investigation. Uh, and, and basically you're saying, what? The, oh, there's so many people who's like, what the hell happened? To get a member, it's eight days later. And well, seven days as of today, and it's still not opened. I'll let you guys know next week when it opens. They're scared to death because of the volatility of reopening the market and having the whole thing over again, happening over again, because they don't know what happened. They don't. All they know is everyone was just spending gobs and gobs of money, both for and against nickel, and it, and it, it you know, it was like they're flowing fuel on both sides, and the fire got so high that no one knew what it meant. Oh, just amazing. Absolutely freaking mind boggling. So and I just just it seriously be this nice story, to have that much money uh, <laughs> or lose that much money. There was a, there was, I had heard rumor of one Chinese investor or, or hedge fund that was on the on the hook for eight billion at the end of the day that they had to pay out because they lost so much. And that was just one one player. In this game, Dang. yeah, I know. And again, that shows you why the Ukraine Russia thing don't immediately, you know, things will happen faster than normal now because people, because there's money to be made in conflicts like this, which we will get into. So, anyway, wonderful stuff. If anyone wants that little uh, document, please email me and I'll send you the thing from the London's London Metal Exchange. It's brilliant. It's just this great legalese way of saying, yeah, we don't know what happened, but we're not doing anything until we can figure it out. Yeah, a week later. When are you guys going to reopen the nickel market? Don't know. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, okay. Next one down is. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's let's hit something a little more ho- close to home. Ready? West Coast sees rising gas prices despite national average decline. Now I don't really care about West Coast East Coast stuff, and some people say, oh, you know, they went down ten cents or a nickel or whatever, depending on where you were. However, the national average, which set a record uh, on March 11th of four dollars and thirty-three cents, is not going anywhere. And California is the the highest in the country. As of a couple of days ago, they were at for regular gas was five seventy five, which I thought was interesting because it's actually higher than Hawaii. Could be because of taxes. Probably right? because of taxes. Probably because Hawaii, know, you don't want to. Mom... Cap... Go ahead. I was saying my mom still lives in California, and she told me that in the last election that she said all the stupid Californians voted to keep the the taxes high on gas. Oh my god. <laughs> That's going to bite them. Yeah, do that. <laughs> do that. Yeah, you wait. If if gas starts hitting, once it hits a certain level, you're going to start seeing people start snagging gas. You're going to start seeing siphoning people. Yeah, you better get a lock-in gas cap, y'all. Yeah, yeah, get a lock gas cap. I don't. <laughs> it's just sad. I really should get one. All right, uh, next one down. Uh, this is more Captain Obvious which is from USA Today. It's not fun. Soaring gas prices are, are walloping Americans, but hitting poor people hardest. I know they say Duh. lowering. Yeah, I know. Poor people have to. Yeah, so if you don't have, again, this is this is Economics 101. So thank you, USA Today, for, for running this story. If you don't have a lot of money, then high gas prices hurt you the most. Moving on. <laughs> Yeah, which is, again, they're going to be the ones rioting first. It's like if you have to choose between a full tank of gas and some groceries, oh, you're going to – people are going to start hearing it. No question. Um, moving on, next one down. Okay, the next one down I thought was a joke. I am embarrassed to say that sometimes when I pick up on a news story, I don't – it's from an obscure place. So – if you guys have been watching anything on YouTube, Saturday Night Live did a skit where Biden met with a bunch of TikTokers in the Oval Office to see if they could come up with solutions for the Ukraine-Russian war. Now, I thought this was original content that they were going off of. I had no idea that it was based on a real thing. 
Meaning, and they, of course, they didn't go to the Oval Office. They're not that stupid. <laughs> but the White House, the, the, this is from Fox, and this is not a sensationalist anti-Biden story. White House drafts TikTok stars to blame Putin for rising gas prices. They did a, a big conference call with 30 of the bigger TikTok people, and they said, hey, get the word out that Russia and Putin are responsible basically for all inflation, including what's happening at the pumps. And there's a video in here by some uh, brunette Barbie who does that very thing. You know, it's like, oh, you know, so like Putin, he's responsible for gas prices and things. I don't know. I don't drive. Whatever. I was just making that last part up. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, again, I thought it was totally a made up thing. And Saturday Night Live, I'm watching the skit in absolute horror because I realize it's based on a real event. It's like, so oh, just, just really Again, that's how the propaganda machines. But they didn't even they didn't even bother hiding it. It's like, oh yeah, let's get let's get TikTokers to blame gas prices on on Putin. Brilliant. Next week, I'm wearing my Russian hat again, just so you know. Uh, okay, let's do lucky unlucky before the break. We can do a few of these. Uh, first one is Tracy Braxton uh, dies at fifty, and I'm, we're going oldest first. Tracy, you're probably saying, wait, do I know to Braxton? Yeah, well, her her Grammy winning sister Tony, she's alive, but sister died of um, throat cancer. Is that esophageal cancer? Throat um, cancer. yeah, so. yeah, esophageal, esophageal cancer. Yeah, somebody yeah. look that up. Yeah, yeah, that would be in your throat. Yeah, yeah, your esophagus so, is in your throat. But came up on pretty fast. Don't want to blame it on. I'm not going to because I want to put this thing up on YouTube. Next one down is a Nigerian World Cup soccer player died suddenly at age 40. Oh, by the way, this is on Russia Today. So Russia Today is still being uh, broadcast in our neck of the woods. Died suddenly of a, um, I think it was a heart attack. And uh, we don't know what it's from. Again, it's a mystery. Next one down. No idea. No idea of unknown origin. Uh, next, it's probably down. the time change. Actually, now that I think about you it, you know what? It's the time change. Probably oh, the we're, time we're change. gonna get we're gonna get into some of that. <laughs> Absolutely, there's some. Yeah, I saw that article where time change promotes heart attacks. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even include it in this one, but we'll get into some. I'll get I'll show you one that's even worse. Um, oh, wait, did I not include that in the list? Crap, I think I did. Uh, if I didn't, let me know. Uh, so the next one down, so I, if you know, forgive me, I did not know who Kellis, Keyless, I don't know that singer. I know she's, she's somewhat famous, never heard of her before. What's interesting though, is her husband passed away recently at the age of 37 after getting stage four stomach cancer, just out of the blue, which I thought, okay, like stomach cancer doesn't usually sneak up on anyone. This one did. And it's like, okay. So again, unknown, don't know why, not going to speculate why. Uh, next one down, let's get to the youngest, we're saving the youngest for the last, uh, but these are the lucky ones, ready? So Nelly Corda, this is from Golf Digest Magazine, why are we doing a golf story? Because she's the second best female golf player in the world, and she's not playing right now. She's 23 years old, probably fresh out of college, and she had a um, blood clot. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> yeah, her arm started to swell because of a blood clot. And so she's treating it probably with blood thinners. Moving on. Who else got a blood clot? That's probably the famous one. You guys, not this, I'm, I'm doing this one so no one calls in with it. Haley Bieber. You're probably saying, hey, is she related? Yes, she is related. This is from Entertainment Tonight Canada. Haley Bieber, wife of... Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, Justin. Uh, she experienced, she had a blood clot and experiencing stroke like symptoms. It's one of the scariest moments I've ever been through. And she was 25. She's alive. And uh, she got it in her head, a blood clot in her brain. Ooh. So, yeah, no. Lucky that uh, she's doing that. By the way, do you know who Haley Bieber is? Little little side note. She is Stephen Baldwin's daughter. No, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So so Alec Baldwin's niece. There you go. Wow. Yeah, I know. 
There you go. Uh, and then the follow-up story to that, which is right below it, and we're going to spend 10 seconds on it, which is from People Magazine. That's a great shot of Justin. Justin Bieber, very worried for his wife Haley after the blood clot. He can barely sleep. Back after the break. RTFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. It's you, me, and the lovely Karen B. And you know what? That was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album. Night and day. Yes, indeed. By the way, I missed a meetup. Jeez, I am such a scatterbrain sometimes. Uh, Flat Earth Meetup, New York City, April 2nd at mm-hmm. a lovely Mexican restaurant. You can check it out at, uh, is it on your thing, flatearthfestivals.com as well? Yes, it is. And I also have it up on the screen right now. Very cool. And the trailer is on my channel. So, there you go. And I will mention it next week, day after uh, April Fool's Day. Okay, let's get back to the headlines. Got a bunch to cover. Let's do the hype first, which is uh, World War Three Red Alert China to enter the war. But he's gonna, they're going to back Ukraine? I'm sorry. No, they're going to back Russia, of course, because they're friends. Right. That's bad. That's from the Beltway report. I think it's a little hyped because we haven't gotten that far yet. So don't start, you know, digging the bomb shelter. Let's go down to the next one, which is more important. Ready? Right? This is the one that was glossed over. No one's talking about this, and you really should understand this. It's probably as or more important than the nickel thing, although not as outrageous, which is petrodollar. This is from Zero Hedge. Petrodollar cracks. Saudi Arabia considers accepting the Chinese yuan for oil sales. Now, why is this a big deal? If you know anything about the American economy, all oil that is traded in the world right now is traded with the dollar. That is the pet. That's why they call it the petrodollar. We, you know, if you buy oil, you're using the dollar. It's a big deal. It lets us do what we do best, which is <laughs> overspend and expand and colonize and rule the world. And empire build. Yes. Oh, yeah. We the, the empire that we have built so far has been built off the petrodollar. So if Saudi Arabia <laughs> does this, if they switch over, this is not some just – spur of the moment thing if they switch over to the one oh oh you're gonna hear it it's gonna be amazing uh next one down which is also interesting if you want to talk about there's a secret trade war that's happening out there and a lot of people aren't talking about it which is from the new york times <laughs> again new york times should be kind of hyping this up which is a uh, lockdown set to further disrupt global supply chains what they're doing is they are locking down cities, only cities that manufacture American products. So, and you, and I'm sorry for the New York Times thing if it's popping up on your screen, uh, you know, because New York Times they're trying to sell papers. Yeah. The, um, but what they're doing is they're um, they're, uh, they're doing this under the guise of of the virus. So they're saying, oh wow, well, there seems to be some people over there making iPhones that um, are infected. So let's shut down the whole city and no phones <laughs> or a lot of other things. And what are we going to do? We're going to say there's no virus. There, it's, there's nothing there. We're not going to say that. So, yeah, that's again, this is this is the precursor to Taiwan. This this is something you would do to start start posturing. And then one day, all of a sudden, paratroopers and, and boats into Taiwan. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, next one down. Uh, this is one. This is what I call the caddy, the caddy article of the week. This is from Your Tango. 
I don't know if we've ever used your tango before. Nurse theorizes that Vladimir Putin has Parkinson's disease after noticing symptoms in viral video. Okay, so all this is is just making trying to make him look as bad as possible. We've seen articles, right. oh, he looks sick, oh, he might be dying. Oh, no, no, this nurse says, yeah, you know what? I think he's got Parkinson's. Next thing you know, you're going to have all these other people saying he's got Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then Michael J. Fox is going to send him a card. They can say whatever they want. He's never going to look as bad as Joe Biden. No, no, <laughs> no, no. As a matter of fact, Putin could be lying dead on a slab for three days <laughs> and still be more anything than Joe Biden in He'd any way. Have... And he could still beat Joe Biden in a fight. <laughs> yeah. Still. He'd have cleaner pants. Oh, God. Isn't that the truth? All right. Uh, next one <laughs> down. Um, I don't really know what to comment about. This is from Self. Uh, is COVID brain shrinkage really a thing? Wonderful little graphic there. Um, so Oxford University said that the virus can lead to a reduction in brain size, at least certain areas of the brain, along with reduction in overall brain size, even in people who had relatively mild cases. All right, I've had time to think about the joke here. The joke is, if you think you had it and you believed in everything, then your brain is probably smaller. How's that? That's that's my that's my comeback to this. I mean, what do what do you right. do? What do you do with this? I mean, it's like you're just gonna tell people, it's oh yeah, by the way, it could shrink your brain. No, probably reading mainstream media is what shrinks your brain. Right. Watching the news shrinks your brain. Yeah. But watching no. TikTok shrinks your brain. I mean, I, I don't even know how this would affect a hypochondriac. The the thought is like, oh, what does what does that mean? Is my am I forgetting things? Am I not as intelligent? Well, that much is obvious. All right, moving on. Next one down. Oh, I want to get into this one a little bit. This is from Business Insider India. Oh, that's why we didn't see it in the American media. Okay, legendary investor Jeremy Grantham says Russia's attack could be the start of a multi-year super cold war and explains how that isn't doom for stock markets. Okay, first off, it's a complete contradiction. He says he's made this up. There is no such thing as a super cold war. He just right. made that up. Right. And then he says it's not that bad. But who is it not bad for? And this is – you know, here's a picture of him. This sinister X-Files looking – <laughs> guy skeletor yeah skeletor okay you scroll down and here's where here's where he just throws me here's where i get a little chill down my 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 spine okay uh so it isn't necessarily doom for the stock market rich people you know anyone that, that's trading on big levels it's a miserable time for everyone else but then in wartime people do work harder and produce more <laughs> Uh, they can have a follow-on boost for the economies of the countries involved in combat. <laughs> World War II really pumped up the U.S. in particular for the next 20 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy is a big picture type of guy. And the, 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 the average person on the street, <laughs> you're not part of his world. <laughs> What's that line from George Carlin? It's a big club and, and you, you ain't, ain't in it. In it. Um, why does it say the GMO co-founder, did he help create GMOs, veteran investor and GMO co-founder? I didn't even see that. That, 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 that's, that's about right. This is one of those guys that he shouldn't, I'm surprised they're interviewing him, that they're publishing him. I think he's one of those guys you're not supposed to actually put in an article for reasons, you know, reasons. Yeah. No, because he just talks about the death of the plebes to make the rich richer. This is yep. what this basically what this guy does. Yep. Yep. And he's basically, you know, he, money can be made. Even in the greatest, greatest conflict, money can be made. Oh, yeah, people are going to have to die. <laughs> like yeah. He's, he, he's probably for coined, business. But, uh, well, you know, I, you know, I'm going to make up a quote for him. Ready? You know, sometimes when you when you in order to make an omelet. You got to kill a whole bunch of people. <laughs> right. That's this guy. Wow. Okay. Next guy down. 
Uh, okay, here's another Captain Captain Obvious. Ready? This is from Insider. The owner of a matchmaking service that sets up Chinese men with European women says interest in Ukrainian women doubled <laughs> during Russia's invasion. And there's a lovely shot of, of some brides down below with price tags probably on the back. Yeah, so if you're a Ukrainian woman and you're trying to get out, chances are you're getting out for cheap. I don't know who's setting up all the Eastern Bloc brides right now, but Ukraine women, oh, that's the best bang for your buck right there. Don't know why Chinese men are, are so hot for the thing. Maybe you know, they're looking for a bargain, but yeah, there's a, there's a Captain Obvious. Love love the little um, flower thing on her eye. I thought that was very nice. Kind of, it matches her um, her necklace. It's very mm -hmm. nice. Okay, next one down is uh, okay. Here's something you should not do. All right, here's public service announcements. Announcement. Some business insider. I'm an Airbnb host in Ukraine. I've made three thousand dollars from donation bookings and used it to support our army. All right. If you guys don't know what the latest thing that's happening out there is, you can funnel money into certain places like hot zones in wartime by setting up an Airbnb that's not really there. But yeah, as an account, you say it's in Ukraine, and then someone don't you know rents the place that they're never going to stay at, and then the money goes to you. However, let's face it: if you're donating three thousand dollars to an Airbnb, if you're just throwing three thousand dollars because someone says they're going to channel it to the Ukrainian army, uh, you should never ever complain about anything in this country ever again, <laughs> ever. <laughs> You've got way too much time and money on your hands to it's just just seriously just throw them three grand. Yeah, you, you gonna do you have any guarantees that's going? Because I my look, if it was me, Sergey and <laughs> ten of my friends, we'd set up all sorts of fake Airbnbs and we'd take your money and buy other things with it, or funnel it out of the country. How's that? Yeah, why uh, not? All right, next one down. <laughs> Uh, this one's obvious. Uh, this is from The Verge. We'll spend 10 seconds on it. YouTube is now blocking Russian state-funded media worldwide. Yep. Of course they are. They block uh, medical misinformation. They block false flags. They shadow ban flat earth. <laughs> they do all sorts of fun things. And you can't – your thumbs down don't mean anything now in YouTube. So thanks, YouTube. Uh, next one down – uh, this is Biden doing absolutely nothing. It's from ABC News. Biden warns Russia will pay severe price if it deploys chemical weapons. Okay. Uh, first, if you're deploying chemical weapons, chances are you're losing. So I don't think Russia is going to be doing that, which leads to the next thing is, could it be a false flag? Yeah, it could be. You could set up a, a, a chemical weapon false flag on the Poland border, let some gas roll into Poland, say that somebody died from it. I don't know, some school kids or somebody that was standing next to the border. Maybe. But uh, yeah, and the fact, severe price. What? What What are you going to do? I know I'm not wearing my Russian hat. By what are you going to do? What are you going to do to Russia that you haven't done? What are you you going to pull that trigger? No. All right, um, idiots of the week, and then we'll do one last thing. Uh, Elon Musk, you guys get to choose who, and you can do this in Karen's chat if you want, which is what is the worst Elon Musk headline? One of these two. First is Elon Musk, New York Post, challenges Vladimir Putin to single combat. The winner gets Ukraine. <laughs> oh, God. You remember how I said in my book how – useless he is because every headline he, he makes again if you're a billionaire because so many people worship money if you're a billionaire and you just make up stuff they will print it because you're a billionaire and they think that you you're smarter than people other people and again you know well i'm, I'm gonna send people to the moon in 2017 no you didn't i'm gonna make a high-speed bullet train no high-speed airplane no i'm gonna save those kids in that cave no He's never done anything. And this one, why would you even throw that out there? Why? Because it generates headlines. That's it. Or even though this is a bad headline, the one below it I think is pretty close, which is Elon Musk is not long for this world. And this is from The Cut. That's a great shot of him. God. Okay. Why would they run this, this story? Well, because he wants to live on Mars. So you see what they did there. They said he's not long for this world. What they meant was Earth. But when you say Elon Musk is not for this world, it's like, oh, is he sick? Is he dying? Do I care? No, you wouldn't care about any of those things. And if he goes to Mars, 
which he can't do, it'd be great for us. The world would actually be a better place. At least the media would be a slightly better place yeah. if he was gone. Go. Yeah. So, yeah, Elon <laughs> Musk, either one of those stories, you guys pick which one's worse. But he did both of those in a single week. And I I just loathe the man. I so loathe it. he challenged Vladimir Putin to a fight for Ukraine, and he says he's going to Mars. go to Mars yeah. by 2030, it says. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, throw that throw right. that date out there. Even though Americans cannot think past May, <laughs> it's 2030, no one would even begin to remember that headline. Whatever. I know. I don't. Anything he says about space, especially since that whole he was going to send tourists around the moon. I think it was 2018, actually. Um, and that never happened. Never even never even started. None of his projects ever start. And yet he's delivering stuff to the ISS on a regular basis. No, I don't think so. Uh, okay. We're going to do my only real story of the week, and then I'm going to follow it up with a couple things I threw at the, at the end for you. Uh, the first one is, um, the only real story of the week, story of the week is the Senate passing the bill. And I am so grateful for this, this is from USA Today to make daylight saving time permanent, meaning you don't have to switch your clocks anymore. Isn't that great? It's called the Sunshine Protection Act. <laughs> and it is so overdue, which would permanently extend daylight saving time from eight months of the year to the full 12 months. What took you guys so long? I'm right. not kidding you. It is, it is 2022. You have kids growing up that have no idea, as Peanut pointed out before the show, he said that uh, – uh, it's because of industry, because back when they first started it, they didn't want to use as much lamp oil because it would be pre-electricity. Here we are a hundred years later, just now getting around to this. There are enormous health and economic benefits to making daylight saving time permanent, such as a reduction in heart attack and heart disease. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which... <laughs> 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 Which segues nicely, by the way, into something that I'd like to I'd like to point out. So at the very end of this, um, the very end of our chat, if you if you scroll down a little bit, Karen, there is something that you and I and all sorts of people have known for a very, very long time. And the article is called This is from Medical News Today, right? And this is an old article. Mm -hmm. This is about we I have heard this for years and years, which is Drink, you know, if you're going to do something healthy, if you're going to drink alcohol and you want to do something re remotely healthfully, healthy, drink a glass of red wine every evening. Yeah. A glass of red wine. We, I have heard this time and time and time again. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing that for a long time too. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've gone out of my way. Not white wine, red wine. We have heard mm -hmm. this again and again and again. In fact, here's the article. It just says, oh yeah, absolutely. It's good for cardiovascular, um, uh, Cardioprotective effects. The American Heart Association says that studies do not show cause and effect relationships. However, all right, mm -hmm. let's. And by the way, it's one glass of wine per day for females, two glasses of wine for males, because you know, because you're male beasts. Pri male privilege, and one, <laughs> one one glass of wine is five ounces, right, of twelve out of twelve percent yeah. alcohol. Okay, so here's the next one, right? This is the reason why I dug up this old article is because of this one right below it. Surprising side effects wine has on your heart. Ready? Can you guess what it is? Number five, it can weaken your heart. <laughs> <clears throat> Alcoholic cardio my myopathy weakens and thins the heart muscle so it can no longer pump blood efficiently and leads to heart failure <sighs> wow well probably in excess that's probably true but everything in moderation they do say yeah but that's not but again why put that in the headline yes down below it says red wine is often heralded as a heart healthy choice but it's not that simple whatever <laughs> Uh, again, everything now causes heart attacks. Everything. Absolutely freaking everything. All right. Um, uh, if we have time, I want to mention. Okay, that's it. That's all the headlines, believe it or not. Fantastic. So, yeah. So there you go. So it's kind of a mix. We'll see what next week brings. Uh, I would think, again, the, 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 the war is winding down. They're already at the western edge of 
of Ukraine. So there can't be that much more going on. And we'll again we'll see what uh, what we dig up next week. But remember, remember, volatility is the key thing right now. Supply and demand. That you want if you want to, quick highlights of what you what you should be looking for. The petrodollar. If if anyone breaks from the petrodollar, and by the way, other countries have tried to break from the petrodollar, and usually we bomb the crap out of them <laughs> if they're small. That's what we do. Uh, also, you know the 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 nickel exchange. Check that out. And also, if China starts keeps locking down more and more cities that make our stuff, it's a big deal. All these things are are uh, uh, foreshadowing of greater conflicts to come. All right, phone number to call in is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That's two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. And let's pick up Ohio nine three seven nine three seven. Wait, hang on. Peanut Gallery has one more article for me. One second. Daily Mail. Uh, your country doesn't have that many rubles to buy it back. Social media users mercilessly mocks Russia after Kremlin demanded U.S. give it back Alaska. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can mock Russia all day long. If, if they've got China as their backup, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you don't want to. There's a reason why I'm going to be wearing a Russian hat next week. Okay, let's move on <laughs> to um, – no, I, look, again, you've heard me say it before. I'm a big fan of the USSR. I, 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 I love a good rival. Love it. You know, I could watch Rocky IV all day long. Let's go even though Dolph, <laughs> even though Dolph Lundgren was, a, um, was German. All right, uh, 937. 937. It's you, me, Karen B. What's happening? 937. You're on. Line unmuted. Hello. All right, fine. All right, fine, fine, fine. You know what? Let's I... go down. Let's go back down to New York. Nine, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nine one seven. You're on with Karen and me. What's happening out in New York? Uh, North Carolina. By oh, way you're North you. Carolina? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's happening? And you guys seem way too happy tonight in light of the <laughs> current events going on in the world. If I'm not laughing, I'm crying, man. I hear you, man. <laughs> it is a big deal. Very, very big deal. Yeah. And again, the the average American does not even know the definition of petrodollar. Uh, it's one of those hidden American secrets, which is like we've gotten to do so many things because we basically said, yeah, all oil should be traded in the dollar. And if you don't like it, well, we got some planes over here that'll convince you otherwise. Yeah, they killed Gaddafi and they killed. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Middle Eastern <laughs> countries have tried. The in fact, the only you know Saudi Arabia. We'll see what happens there. You know, the thing is, we've are, we're already in Saudi, so eh, don't know what's going on. That's the difference, though, is that when 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 they killed Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein, um, you know, they wanted to preserve the petrodollar now. Times whole Klaus Schwab thing, and I think this is being done intentionally. You know, Joe Biden, as puppet president, is not put there for no reason. I think this is well intended. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> if you want to, ta- I mean, I... serious. Yeah. Go ahead. Serious, serious ramifications. If the price of gas goes to twelve bucks a gallon, which is many, it's over, man. Well, there'll be there'll be a lot there'll be a big uptick in crime. I know that, and people there'll food, be this weird food sw- prices going up. Yeah, food prices are going up. Well, there was an article I didn't read. Like um, the surcharges are already being applied in certain certain things. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. delivery prices, Amazon's prices will go up. Uber is already doing a surcharge. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we, we are tied. We are so dependent on oil related services that yes, it will affect everything. But I, but I think, I I think we'll go go ahead. Do you think there's a legit possibility this year that there may be, uh, no power for long durations, weeks, months? No. No, no. Power's a, power's a whole you know, other thing. And and as I've mentioned, 
a bunch of times you want to keep remember <laughs> power means internet and internet means the narrative you want to wait until the absolute last second before you pull off you know the the narrative because that's how you direct the people where the phones go is where the people, so I agree, and I'm not trying. I'm very optimistic uh, generally, and I don't want to, you know, get on here and all Tuesday. But you know, let's think about the Georgia guys now, right? Oh yeah, Could no, no. Perhaps I, something to contemplate, most, right? Yeah, most most people when they think of the Georgia Guidestones don't really. I mean, yeah, everybody reads the numbers, but nobody wants to, you know, no. It's it's mostly denial. Nobody wants to think it. You know, it happened to them. And and by the way, it wouldn't be well, yeah. yes. It, yeah. Not when you say nine out of ten people in the Georgia Guidestones, that doesn't mean nine out of every ten people uniformly in different countries, because as you know, not all countries were created equal. So so check it out, Mark. Countries. You know about the Deagle report. You know about the Deagle yeah. Report? Have you heard of that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they had predicted, I believe, in 2019 that by 2024, Russia and China would actually have a slight increase in population, right? And keep in mind it's happening right now, okay? With both yeah. leaders talking about how they want to, you know, keep and masculine and, and, and they're encouraging, you know, birth. Uh, they predict in 2024, the United States will have about 90 million people and most other countries will correspond in the same proportion. So that's a good production. Now, I am not, again, I'm not calling to be negative. I'm not calling to try to scare people. You know, I'm, I, I believe in prepare for the worst and hope for the best. I do believe in miracles. I believe people wake up in time. You know, 30, 30 and, seconds, so make it I'm quick. I'm putting it out there. Yeah. Okay. I'm just putting no, I it out you. there, man. I, this is something we should all think about and uh, start planning for. So, you know, just saying. Love you guys. I hear you. Shout out to everybody involved in enough letters and, uh, you know, stay positive, but just, you know, just be prepared. Long time. All right. I hear you, man. All right. Later, guys. Have a good one. And when we come back, before we take the uh, the phone calls, when we come back, I will direct you guys how to get a free survival guide, which is mine. You don't even have to pay for it. You can pay for it if you want, but did I tell you this little devil craps candy? Yes. <laughs> Censorship and regulation is becoming an ever. This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously, under heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four to me and Karen B. And you know what? I am going to do the, uh, I got to remind people of the survival guide. So I wrote a survival guide some years ago called Empty Shelves. And if you want a free PDF copy of it, you can just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if you can't remember that, just go to any video on my YouTube channel, and it's in the description box. Uh, Of course, if you want to buy the hard copy, which I kind of recommend, otherwise you're going to print it out. Otherwise, you're going to be reading it during the apocalypse going, oh, crap, my battery life. What's it say about zombies again? Um, It's on Amazon. The audio version and the print version is out there. 
And Peanut Gallery says he wants a copy written in stone in case the computers die. What about paper? Paper, man. It's a real thing. I know Egon said that print was dead, but come on. Of course, he said that 30 years ago. Paper used for rolling, right? All right. Let's pick up some calls. Let's go to Florida. 786, you are unmuted and talking to you, me, and Karen B. Florida. Line unmuted. You. Florida. 786. All right, fine. Uh, let's go to <laughs> let's go to California. 669. You are unmuted. Hey, Mark. Hey, Karen. Hey, Peanut Gallery. Hey. 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 Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, I, yeah. The world's falling apart, huh? It is, but since you're in California, you're going to be handling it, I think, much better than people on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I live in the mountains, too. It's pretty mellow. <laughs> yeah. Do you, so, okay, so you live in the mountains in California. Where where in the mountains, if you don't mind me asking? The Santa Cruz Mountains, above, like, San Jose area. Nice. Nice. Do you have to, do you have to drive yeah. much? No, not really. Oh, no. so gas prices probably like don't my, really affect you. Though. My boy goes to school, but it's only like you know, it's like five minutes away, so it's pretty easy going. So does he does he ride a bike or does he walk? No, I drive him. <laughs> That's all right, then. That's fine. You, you spend yeah, maybe yeah. a eight, eighth of a tank of gas. Yeah, barely. Really use much gas, but yeah, it's like six. It's going on seven bucks in certain parts of my area. In this area, nice. I think it might have reached seven dollars in several spots. What uh, if you don't? If you don't? Center. If you don't mind me asking, um, what 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 are you driving? It's a it's a little sporty, like Subaru WRX. Oh wow! These little cool. sporty fat yeah. little fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Nice. nice. It gets pretty Very good cool. gas mileage. All right. Well, then you're gonna you you probably drive? be fine. I I drive a um a Chrysler 300, uh with a oh, with a big yeah, old Hemi. Cool. Yeah, with a big old Hemi in it, and uh, I hardly ever put any miles right. on it at all. It is first year. It's the one from the movie. It is first year, and it has not hit sixty thousand miles yet. I'm embarrassed. Dang, I'm I know. Yeah. I know. I have never had to. Either, huh? I haven't had to commute for so long. Even when I was in Colorado, I didn't. Uh, I I really don't like driving that much. So I I hard. Yeah. In fact, there was there a quick little story for you. There were three months I didn't have a car. My office was I think three miles away. And what happened was, if you guys didn't, some of you may know this how this works. I um I sold my car and I was I was taking my time to buy a new car. And I canceled my insurance. And when I bought the car, I went back to my insurance guy and I said, hey, you know, I'd like to get insurance for my car. And they said, OK, by the way, your rates now doubled. And I said, why? Why yeah. would it double? They go, they go, because you've been driving without insurance for three months. And I go, dude, I didn't have a car. And they go, <laughs> we don't know that. No, seriously, we, we don't know that. And our, our stats say that there is a 90 something percent chance you were just driving without insurance. And I was like, what? <laughs> so they raised your... and, oh, wow. and, and so I, I went, I had a friend vouch for me for another insurance place. And what they told me was, I go, what's the deal? And they go, oh, yeah, you can never cancel car insurance if you're ever going to drive again. And I go, what? I go, what happens if you, like, wow. leave the country? And they go, if you, like, go to Europe for six months, you have to contact the insurance people and have them put it on um, vacation rate. Meaning you just get charged Damn, for I being... Yeah, getting charged for being in your garage because the numbers, they, they're they all about the numbers and, and the stats. And they said, yeah, there's this high – since there's a 90% chance that you drove without insurance, that's what we're going with. doesn't matter how, how much you complain. Yeah, it's weird. wild. That is criminal. That's I know. Weird, I, I did not – I, I had no – for years. It's extortion. What a so bunch of what, shit. So what they don't tell yeah. you, depending on yeah. how – what the when you call up, if you ever try to cancel your insurance, your insurance guy should tell you, oh, yeah, that's a terrible idea. But a lot of times they don't apparently <laughs> yeah. 
they want to jack up your rates afterwards. Yeah, it's not not good. Oh, that's just like a total racketeering move then. Uh, yeah, not but, good. Uh, it's like real. I, I, so basically, he said so. If I, so I have to carry insurance forever unless I decide one day I'm never going to drive again. And they go, yep. <laughs> I go, wow, that's harsh, dude. Karen's Brute. right. That is criminal because it's like you should never like be so presumptuous as to as to accuse your uh, client as being someone who's breaking the law. You know, I mean, that's well, just rude. what if you get in an accident and you don't yep. have your car and you literally can't drive? <laughs> you they know? will. They they charge you apparently. <laughs> yeah, totally. they, they charge you like twenty bucks a month to keep it in your garage. Not making this up. You can you can check it out for yourself. I was like, wow, because okay. apparently there used to be a time before this happened. It used to be a time where people would cancel their insurance. They just would drive without insurance. They they get insurance enough to yeah, for their for the DMV stuff, and then they cancel it. Yep, get your registration. Yeah. You cancel it, and then I've all they, that, be all yeah. these things. And so <laughs> that was their way of of getting their uh, insurance is a racket. Yeah, it uh, is. So this is all my fault. <laughs> why you don't have insurance <laughs> no i used to do that when i was like home or cash poor i would just like you know insure it just oh. so i can get registered and then just piss it off for the rest of the year there you go because i'm a good driver yeah. no no i mean i've had very very few accidents but uh i mean compared to like my, my my dad who like totaled eight cars before he was out of college oh my gosh oh, yeah, he oh, was okay. horrible yeah I mean, like <laughs> the type of guy that would, you know, back in the day, back in the the late fifties, early sixties, where you'd look at each other in an intersection. It's like, yeah, man, let's go. And then he'd drop a transmission in the middle of the street. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bad decisions. Thing. Yeah. My anyway, anything like, else? So slow. Go, go ahead. A anything else I can do for you? Oh, well, hey, man, I like that you put that uh, the flat Earth. Uh, what was it? The flatten the curve whatever i saw that you put that up or is that, is that uh, oh yeah the, the the film that was made by uh the the oh, crap hang on the uh the flat earth documentary flatten the curve yeah flatten yeah the curve. is yeah, that yeah. new I, I haven't gotten all that new? Yet, but I it's two it. weeks ago yeah yeah, it was cool. It was, just, it was with yeah, all. It was basically there. talking. Is that all those, the pilots? Yeah, it's all the pilots. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's 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 gotten pretty good reception. The audio the audio isn't great. I boosted it as best I could before I put it up on my channel, but uh, it's it's not bad. I mean, the content's good. Yeah, yeah, I was enjoying it. Yeah, I like it. Right on. Yeah, I wanted to um put put it out there for anyone who's curious about some flat Earth. I I have this flat Earth proof that that i've been like trying to get in people's heads for a while but i mean i can't summarize it too brief right now but i want to point people towards my my video called globe debunked on my channel bass backwards just because it's just, it's a it's a globe debunker that i've that i've that i've kind of come up with on my own and like i can't get anyone to like understand it with me it's so frustrating uh i've gotten a few people to see what i'm saying but yeah it's just I can. I mean, I, I don't want to tease you guys, but I. <laughs> uh, if you want? I can go into detail. No, 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 no. We don't have time right now. But uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. That's all right. Shoot me a thing. Shoot me an email, and we'll um, and maybe I'll I'll give you a call. Okay. And we'll talk about it. Great. Well, what what is your where do I, where do I get your email? Dude, seriously. Uh, what is, every it, it might, the, it's um, in the description of every video on Mark's channel. Or, or I'm I'm not kidding. You could just Google. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I know it doesn't work for a lot of people, but literally, you could type into Google Mark Sargent's email, and it will pop it up on oh, screen. Oh, you're right. You're right. Right. No, uh, or Mark Sargent's right, phone cool. number. Or Ooh, does it's Mark 11, Sargent? 11. Does Mark Sargent look like the Gerber baby? Apparently, that is a thing. And I just found out now where that originated from. It was from that nice lady from Popular Science who wrote that article about me. And other people behind the uh, scenes have been calling me that without telling me. So That's funny. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. All right, man. Have a good one. All right. Cheers. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye. Yes, 1111. That special number that Karen cares about. Will you care about it as well? Will you... Look it up and find out what which like properties it has and what magic lies therein.
Maybe. All right, let's go to uh, Boise. Boise, Idaho. 208. Line unmuted. What's happening out in Idaho? Idaho. Hello? (laughs) Hey, are you a long-time listener, first-time caller? Long-time listener. Called multiple times. Oh, okay. What's happening? So, I don't understand the daylight savings. Was that a joke? Or was that, or are you in favor of permanent daylight savings? Oh, I, I, it's absolutely not a joke. I have wanted this to change forever. We're basically, we change the clocks twice a year. It hasn't made sense since I was a kid. And it still it didn't make sense this last weekend, and they're finally going to do it, and they're going to make it to where we don't have to change the clocks anymore. They're just going to pick one day, one time or the other, one hour or the other, and that's it. Then they're just going to go with it. So it's not a joke. But permanent daylight savings time is the opposite of what we should be doing. Well, it depends what perspective you want to come from. As long as I don't have when to... When it's noon, it should be noon, not, not 1, 1 p.m. Again, for me... It, yeah, I know. Phoenix says, by the way, time is made up. Uh, <laughs> but, but it doesn't really matter. I don't care which one they pick. I don't care if they, if they go you know, forward or backwards one hour, as long as we don't have to ever flip it again. That's all I care about. So... If you have an opinion on it, hey, great, fantastic. You can write your congressman and, and say, I'd like it to be this one hour. And other people will say, I want to be this other hour. But I, as long as we can just stick to just, one. Yeah, pick one. Great. As long as we don't have to keep going back and forth, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a joke. They're actually going to do it this time. Well, did it pass the House or did it just pass the Senate? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Doesn't re- doesn't really matter though because it's gonna pass. They, there's it's no objection. Do it for ten years and it never yeah, goes I through. I, for whatever reason, I think the pan the well, the virus of unknown origin has for the last two years has caused people to make make some changes that normally wouldn't get made. So I think it's actually gonna happen. My personal opinion. It's not. I don't think it's gonna be like the penny. Where the penny could you couldn't get rid you cannot get rid of the penny because the Lincoln Historical Society will not let you remove and disparage the the man's name by getting rid of it. So the penny, even though Canada's had the nickel for years, we we can't get rid of the penny. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think daylight savings has been such an irritant for so many people that this time around they're like, you know what, screw it, let's just get rid of it. It's only irritant because. Every year, it's a, they change the dates on a new time, a new day, you know. So, yeah, again, we'll see. I, I'm I'm encouraged that come this next fall back, we will we'll make a decision one way or the other. I'm hoping. Over my almost forty years of life, daylight savings has moved from the end of September to November, the first week of November. Has it? Yes, it, for the for the fall. Oh, all right. Peanut, you know, look it, that it, up. It's <laughs> calendar. You know, it, it's it's, uh, well, it's again, strange. This, so the, all all those de- all those dates won't make any damn difference now. So now we we won't have to worry about it again. It'll look look up. Have the daylight savings days changed over the last twenty years? Have the days changed? Because we generally do them on a Saturday night in rolling into Sunday, yeah. so that so that f- as few people as possible will screw up their work schedule. That's why we do it. It's that's why it's so that's why it's so freaking annoying. If you did it on like a Wednesday, oh, be awful. Anyway, anything else you got? No, nope, that's it. All right. Well, thank you. Have thank a good you. one. All right. You know what? I don't get a lot of calls like that. <laughs> was that article a joke? No, it was not a joke. Although they certainly sounded like one. 
All right, out to New York City. What's happening? 646, line unmuted. What's up? What are you guys doing? Well, we're talking on air. Just about what? Radio show. We're, you know, we're kind of voyeurs, and we want people to um, hear our opinions, and we want to share information with others. In a reasonable. Can we and... talk about something important? Can we talk about something that has some importance? Oh God, what? I don't know. I'm just saying, just give me something that's important that has some gravity. I'm sorry, I said the word gravity. I'm oh, sorry. what are you doing saying that yeah. word in this house? I'm having a night tonight, dude. I've been in Editingville all night long, and my brain is fried, dude. Super fucking fried. Super <laughs> fried. You know, have you ever edited like fucking? two hours worth of fucking film and you go back through it and you're just like, you can't remember your right hand from your left. And you're just like, I can't do this anymore. Why am I even doing this? Fuck everything. You know, editing is not easy. That's why a lot of people started live streaming. Yeah. yeah. That's it the truth. Fucking <laughs> sucks. Sucks. And editing then you do this so major edit and you, you do so much shit in it. And then they're like, what happened to that edit I did? And then like the computer says, no, that, that, that film clip isn't there anymore. Porn okay. classified clip. Like, eating class. What yeah. What the hell was that? Oh, that was Karen hitting an, hitting, hitting a page that had a video on it that auto played. I bet. Yep, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I love those pages. And and then they I can't, sometimes I can't, you like, have to hit pause like twice on them as well. Anyway, go ahead, well, Alex. Well, I'm like. When I'm trying to manage, like, the balance of conversation with you people, it's like uh, I have to, like, spare, like, two seconds every time I, like, say something. But if, if Karen plays a page or something, then I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? And I'm like, what's going on? You, it's like you I'm, people, I'm operating in, like, out of time. You people? Well, is that you because both Karen and I are wearing black right now? Are you you What's exercising that your fucking hat you have on? What the your what the white fuck cotton thing privilege? Your what do you mean? That's a that hat was made by Ronna Lee. It's not a stupid fucking hat. Yeah, that's this is that this was made by one of our listeners. Yeah, this is this is a um, I, this is a a pre birthday hat. <laughs> are you Nordic? Are you Nordic, dude? I actually I am twenty five percent Scandinavian. I did not know that until I took the test, and then was abducted in a black van and replaced with an identical copy. Well, Mark is a tall white man. That's true. <laughs> it's like the most hated man in America yeah. right now. <laughs> are you By really the, the most way, hated man I, I, in America, I, I, Mark? What, like, what no, is I'm just it? Why, why are you saying hated? like tall is white it? man in general. I like... want to say that for for the record, <laughs> and I I don't care if I catch flack for this. I am not a big believer in white privilege or male privilege, but I do believe in majority privilege because that's usually where it comes from. Meaning strength of numbers, strength of arms, or strength of currency. Usually when you have one of those three, you start taking your privilege. You start protecting your own and start doing horrible things, which is how power corrupts. So, Oh, my God. There's no way I can, I can thread off from that. But I can tell you that that hat looks comfortable. <laughs> it looks like it's got like a nice, um, you know, a, I don't know, like a threading thing. It's really comfortable. Right it it is. It's I very nice. And saying. it's loose because I have a giant cranium. Got it. People forget that I have an oversized, you know, size. If you guys know anything about hat sizes, uh, it's I have a size eight plus head, so it's pretty pretty huge. I have a seven point two five for my baseball cap when I was in middle school. That's what I remember. But I, I don't know, man. What, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Karen. Can you just fucking handle this? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, what, don't Alex, care Alex, what do you want me to do? Next Alex caller. Is, I don't know. I know. Just fucking do whatever Alex, you fucking do, Karen. I don't care. Alex is waiting for the he's waiting for the after show and he's impatient. That's what's happening. <laughs> Shut yeah. your face. I'm, Forty minutes. You know, hey, Alex. Karen, I'm, yeah, whatever. Whatever, you guys. I'm getting <laughs> off here. All right. I love you guys. Okay, bye. Uh, bye. 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 Uh, you know, when I mute them, when I mute people now, now it's a soft mute because people just I'm sure people are actually talking after I mute them, but they, they don't hear the line line muted. Mm-hmm. So whatever. OK, uh, it's everything's Putin's fault. It doesn't really matter. Let's go to two, six, nine area code two, six, nine. Have I picked you up already? 
Hey, Mark. How's it going? Hey. Hey, man. Let me see if I can switch over successfully to the normal phone here. Sometimes this works. Uh, do I still got you on the line? Yes, you do. All right, killer, man. So you were just saying about... um. Oh, a certain ruler of a certain country over in a certain place. That's yeah. We can we can say Putin. We don't we don't get banned for saying Putin, by the way. <laughs> I heard it's a swear word now, right? Just um, say Putin boy. on the Ritz. <laughs> Whoa! Holy I got your smoke, Putin right smoke. here. Dude, what? half the half the world was like they're just they just jumped on him like a pack of like wolves, like. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, I heard um, earlier on one of the podcasts, I was listening to someone um, talk about um, oh, the Russian perspective on this. And, yeah, I was thinking, boy, that is definitely an interesting take on it. Yes. Um, because um, I happen to know, you know, they, uh, supposedly they are Orthodox Christian. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people might find that weird or different or whatever, but at the end of the day, they're supposedly Christian, and um, so it makes it makes you scratch your head. It's like, what? Where is he? It, you know, it makes me want to find out where he's coming from on it. Mm. Well, look, empires yeah. are empires. It doesn't really matter what your religion is. I mean, you know, it, unless you're a pacifist religion, you know, if you're Think about what we did. We colonized all sorts of different places, and sometimes we carried the cross with us. So you know, yeah. in Russia, you know they they would they were unfortunately the on the bad end of you know their their union fal faltering. You know they were a lot of people. By the way, don't understand that. So you've heard of third world countries, and mm -hmm. we're considered. We're considered first world. A lot of people don't know this. So I'm going to give you three guys some great trivia. Do you know what second world is? Because people is like, w w was there ever a second world? Second Venus. world. Second um, world. Must be, must be like Europe, right? Like <laughs> clo clo <laughs> close enough. It was it was the Soviet Union. That was the second world. We were oh. first. Soviet Union was second, and everybody else was third. Oh. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's right. Oh, uh, speaking of, guess what? Did you see, um, I wanted to bring this up because my, uh, one of the um, channels I follow uh, was <laughs> bringing it up on their news stuff, and uh, uh, Putin actually lowered the, or, or, or no, eliminated the tax on gold. Did you see that? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah. Um, to to try to you know help um, balance the situation and stuff like you know and, and encourage people to not invest in the U.S. dollar and to if they have the U.S. dollar to try to exchange that in for gold perhaps and try to hold on to the that as an investment you know to try to hedge against the financial stuff that has been recently going on against the against his country. Oh yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about them too much. They have a a lot of resources and a lot of different resources. And we're talking about an area that has we've got four time zones. I think they have nine in one big landmass. And they've got a couple other right. lying in the outside. So yeah, they're no, they're huge. They've got all sorts of fun things to play with. Hey, um hate to do this to you, but the uh we're we're going to our break. So any shout outs? Um, well, um, you know what? Shout out to you. I'm going to get at you on your email because you know what? I we I have like a bunch of stuff to ask you about Bitcoin. Duh. Okay, sure. Uh, oh, I know all the crypto stuff, dude. And like the um, um, I've been looking at the programming, the, the contracts, smart contracts, and doing yeah. it in Python, brother. Wow. You, yeah, right. dude, you want to do some hacking with me again, huh? No, 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 no. I think that's a terrible idea. All right, man. Hey, hey, got to, got to go. Music's playing, but, but email me, okay? Oh, you. This is the White House. speaking. Sorry, I had to cut him off there for a second. What in the holy heck was that about? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll find out.
Real people. Real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. It's you, me, and the lovely Karen B. Well, we're taking some phone calls. The number to call in is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. And you know what? There's some calls on the board. So let's get them, shall we? Awesome let's start. Sauce. Awesome sauce. <laughs> let's start off with... 214 out in Texas. Line unmuted. What's happening out there? Oh, hello, Mark, Karen, and Peanut. Um, I always wondered why they gave us more sunlight when we already have more sunlight. Time yeah. Wise. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? I like it the <clears throat> other way. It never bothered from, me from, when they switch back and forth. From what I understood, it started way back when uh, when they wanted to use it was for the it was for the industries so that they used less resources to light up everything, you know, so people could get home just before you know just before it got dark. But again, it's it's silly. It we should have done this a long long time ago, and I'm I'm glad they're finally. I'm hoping they actually pulled the trigger on this, and I think they will. That sounds good. Um, I have a question for you. Um, I know that they lie so that we get into wars, the government, not the American people. Well, anyway, what was the lie about Korea? Oh, how do we get into Korea? Mm -hmm. Uh, Peanut, what is Korea? What was Korea? Hang on. Oh, it was just it was just an expansion of com, com, com Oh yeah, it was the north it was the north south split. Yeah, China taking over. It was yeah, it was us basically fighting fighting over a border that just never never went away and it and it escalated into a infantry conflict. Korea Civil War, yeah, same as Vietnam. Yeah, that's all it was. It wasn't like the um but you <laughs> you weren't there, man. The um it wasn't like the Gulf of Tonkin. <laughs> I don't think I don't know what the the big spark was, but it wasn't. We'll have to look that up to see if there was any one specific event. In this case, though, it was we were backing the the South and the Chinese were were backing the North, and you know a, a very famous television series was based off of it. Mash. Hmm. Just wondered about that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, I wanted to. Uh, say about uh, Putin and uh, Russia, I believe they are helping to uh, liberate Ukraine and uh, word on the street. And uh, I want to give a shout out to um, Russell Bentley. He's a man for the least the last eight years has been trying to help in the liberation of that country and doing quite a good job. And um, I um, just uh, would like to really have some goodness come back into America. She's a good country, and as all the others are. It's just these crazy governments that want to keep us crazy. Oh, well, I, I wish that too, Jen. I wish that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. America would, would, would get back to a... A time of peace and prosperity and fun, but absolutely because well, we've been yeah. raped. She's been raped by her politicians and her leaders, and stabbed in the back and and uh, poisoned our food and water and yeah, just taken us really down the river. So I'd like to get some more how we used to be in the olden days with our yep. own stuff that helped yep. other people, of course. Yeah. And I yeah, liked yeah. your insurance. 
car story. It is similar. They don't. They should tell you right when you're going to cancel. Don't do this. They, they should. Mm -hmm. Nope, they don't. Well, I think some some honest people might, but others, <clears throat> not not so much. Mm -mm. Oh, quick question: Your island? Are, are you able to tell me how many miles wide it is? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> at its, <clears throat> excuse me, at its narrowest part, it's about some. Um, it's less than a mile wide, and oh, at its okay. wide, and its widest point, I think it's maybe four pushing five miles wide. So a spaceship wow. hovered over you that was like about seven miles wide. It would sort of cover you up, right? Jen. If you're hinting that you're going to help facilitate a ship flying over me, I wouldn't care if it actually just blotted out the sun above me. I would be all for it. Absolutely all for it. But yeah, you're right. If a long spaceship that was seven miles wide or eight, wouldn't even have to be that big, yeah, it would cover a huge chunk of this island. But don't, don't tease me. Don't tease me because that's one of those things. Every more, every day, I walk outside. I look up. It's like, where the hell did I park you? So oh. keep well, pointing my car up, remote. So. Keep pointing my car remote at the sky. Nothing happens. <laughs> the oh, biggest well. car alarm chirp ever. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that um, I was waiting kind of for. Um, um, <laughs> Oh, 360 to call in. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah I'm, and she I'm didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a mental block right now, yeah. No worries. Mm -hmm. Thank any, you, any... Peanut. No. <laughs> no, I did my shout out to Mr. Bentley. Yes, thank you. Okay. Cool. All right. Is that it, Jen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Have you have a good night, too. <laughs> Okay. Bye bye. No, that was Jan. Uh, Jan's let's, awesome. Jan is awesome. Uh, let's go out. Hey, you know what? I, I, I'm I'm kind of curious. Let's see what Dennis has to say. Five oh four area code. You are unmuted. What is happening, Dennis? Um, uh, turning off the ramp from I five to I eighty four. How's it going? Good. What's uh? What 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 can we do for you? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, is it too early, and this is about Blacktoberfest, by the way, would you say it's too early for us to ask, uh, potentially, this just potentially, not even if it's cast in the stone, but potentially, what city or town would you say Blacktoberfest might be in? Is it too early to ask that? Uh, it's probably a little bit early. It's a little early to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit uh, uh, busy with the traffic right now, but so I'll probably let you go. I just think that was a good call from uh, Jen, especially that last part talking about the the goodness uh, coming to America, and I'll uh, I won't be long with this. I just. I sent you, you know, we talked uh, during the last week or so about Kelly Wilde's book, which is a, a slam against the Flat Earth Movement. And I yes. have something good to say about it. That was, I guess that's like for a pile of curse or doo-doo, I was trying to throw out the silver lining and use that maybe a constructive criticism from her uh, to better uh, the Flat Earth Movement to amend maybe the things we have off but at any rate uh, one thing she doesn't have and a lot of the liberal and i don't know atheist agnostic uh critics of the movement are uh the mainstream america which has lost its morals and that stuff that jen was talking about with wanting for goodness in america i saw a lot of that in the heart of the flat earth movement so i just people like jen they still got it so uh I say uh, uh, shout out to that to all those people who are keeping that spirit alive. Nice. Well, thank you, Dennis. That, that's and all I got. For, 
For for those of you who don't know, we're talking about the uh, um, Kelly Weil from the Daily Beast. She wrote a book called Off the Edge, and I got a copy of it from set by Dennis, and it is mostly gossip about the from inside the Flyers community. Quite a bit about Patricia and David Weiss and um, Nate Thompson and Robbie Davidson. Oh boy. And me and Antonio, and there's an entire chapter dedicated to Mad Mike. It's basically a, it's it's kind of like a book format of the documentary, a lot of it, with the exception of the first three chapters, which we're going into. But we won't talk about that much. You and I, Dennis, we'll talk off air about uh, about it because we both have read it at this point. Roger. Okay, talk to you soon, Dennis. The um, <clears throat> but again, it's hey, I I'll take it because. It's it still brings up the flat Earth concept. She's done a lot of interviews about it, and it talks about flat Earth. Slams it all, all day long, but at the same time, it wasn't slamming nuts and bolts. It was mostly talking about the it was the deep it was the deep dish. It was the juicy stuff. That's all she was really going on. I mean, seriously, doing the whole Patricia Wait. on, on Pat, Patricia Antonio story. <sighs> or again, an entire chapter on Mad Mike, an entire chapter on him. Which the documentary did not want to do because they're like, what happened? Because he hasn't di- he hadn't died yet, but she covered it. <laughs> Whatever. All right, let's get into yes, no, I've done, yeah. All right, let's go into oh, where do we leave off? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we still got time left, so you know what? I haven't picked up this New York call for two two three one. Wait, who's two three one? Okay, let's do three, two, three, one. Two, three, one. Line unmuted. What's happening out in maybe Michigan? That would be Traverse City, Michigan. Hey. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks, man. Mark, you uh, woke me up like, you know, back in 2015. And it's just been a life changer, and especially with Karen B. and uh, Just Jack, what they're doing. I just want to say thanks, man, and keep keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it till um, you know, they pull me off the air, or the world ends, <laughs> which you know, yeah. could be. What I time mean, is I've it had, now? I've had contact. <laughs> I've had contact with you numerous times through email and. And with Karen B over Facebook, and you respond and answer questions, and it's really wonderful. It's a nice community to be in. Yeah, it absolutely is. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Yeah, right on. Thank you. Yeah. What's your name? Good luck. Have a good evening. Keep going. All right. All right. See you, man. I think his name was Bruce. But we probably shouldn't say that on air. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, and by the way, I'm not kidding. I would not trade this in for any any other group. Well, wait a minute. Maybe a nymphomaniac support group? Yeah. <laughs> that, that that would probably be a good group. Uh, or the village people. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Oh That's good. All right, let's go to... Um, <laughs> Let's go to – oh, calls are jumping around. Let's go back to New York. Jump out of here. 631, what's happening? Line unmuted. Yeah, hi, Mark. This is uh, Mike from New York. Hi, Mike. Hey, hi. what's going on? Pretty good, bro. Listen, man, you know how I got first learned about you? I think you were up to clue number five when I started searching the, the flat earth because at that time – I noticed that the I wanted to do that experiment with the egg standing on its end on the equinox. And I noticed that in real time it took place at the very same moment across the flat earth. And that always, uh, you know, so I went online searching the flat earth and I found you. You're up to like, I think, five, clue five or six. But anyway, I mean, you have the resources that, or your listeners could participate in this. But, I mean, how could that be unless the Earth was flat, you know, that it's in real time that you could stand an egg on end, whether you're in Remini, Italy, or, or uh, you know, on the West Coast. To, so, to be honest, but, I have never heard of this one. And yeah, I've heard of a lot of stuff. Hard because- what I did, there was I went to a birthday party once, and there were a bunch of people there, and it was during the equinox in the afternoon. So I said, look, 
anybody who can get an egg to stand on its end, I'll give him 20 bucks. And there's about 12 people there, some adults and mostly children. And they were trying to do it, trying, one wise guy cracked, you know, smashed the egg and it was a little flat and he stood it up. And then the time went by, you know, five or 10 minutes after they said it was. And I said, wow, that's not true. All of a sudden, somebody else said, I got it to stand. Then one after another, they all got the egg to stand on its end. And you could take your finger and flick the egg and it would go like a, like it was some kind of magnetic force and it would stay vertical. You know, I have 10 never, I have never heard of this. I am going to have to, as soon as I'm done with this show, I'm going to look this up unless peanut is probably scrambling yeah, right now. All right. We'll look but this up. This, but this, I talked to a science teacher who lives in my neighborhood and he said, Oh, that's a bunch of bull. He said, you could stand an egg on its end anytime. That's not true. They, maybe you, you know, if you have a still and there's no wind and you're very lucky, you could get, but on, during the equinox, it's like a magnet's holding it straight up. Like I said, you can flick it and it will vibrate and then get still. But the point is this. Um, now, if some you can people that are listening, you can videotape tape it, you know, mark down the date, you know, the time it begins that you can stand the egg up, the duration, you know, when it ends, and your location, your latitude. Because I'm wondering if it can it stands on its end longer the closer you get up north. You know, or I should say I, the I, negative polarity. I don't know. I, I mean, just some... yeah, Peanut's sending but me some articles. Is... Of course, science does not like this concept at all. But at the same time, you know, I am not going to shoot you down on this one because I shot down the uh, the first caller that let me know about the moonlight being, you know, the, the moonlight moon shade. I laughed, laughed at him mm. on air. It's like, what the hell are you smoking? And it turns out she was absolutely right. So I will look into this. I will I will be a man of my word. Well, tomorrow's the equinox okay. in my area, so I'll try it tomorrow. Sure. Sure. Give it a try. But, any, um, any, anything else? But, the thing is this, but, but one more thing. I just wanted to get through my, my trend of thought was that if it's at a longer duration, the, northern, the, the northernmost latitude region, I'm thinking what could cause that? If, the, you know, the dark planet they call Rahu that causes the eclipses and all that. I mean, if that's if that happens to tra traverse the below the uh, pole star, and it's like right in the center, that would make sense. That's the only theory I could give it is that you know across the flat Earth, all the eggs can stand on end at that particular moment. There has to be something at the central point. You know, something has to be crossing over not just the Earth at the equator, but there has to be some kind of a. a a balancing, you know, in effect, opposite on the opposite side of the right, sun or right, something. Right. Uh, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, look. I will, I will take a shot at this thing. You're, you're think, you're thinking outside the box, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you more points. information is needed. Yeah, I'm going to give you points just well, because like, observations needed. Yeah. Yeah, it's an experiment, <laughs> and it's really flat Earth stuff. So if listeners out there can participate, vote, you know, do their own experiment. Take notes, for, you know, video with your phone if you can, and we can find out if it's a shorter duration closer to the equator or, or longer, you know, at the opposite ends of the equator. We could find that out. I'm not saying I don't know what's going to happen, but I know the egg will stand vertical, uh, and it's, you know, you could flick right. it with your finger, and it's not all over. Uh, yeah, I saw, gotcha. it. I saw it. I couldn't. I first I thought it was I, a lie. Do it. I, yeah. I hear you. Hang I hear you. Okay. All right. Well, it thank you, thank you. Age. We 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 will check it out, and we will um we we will report back next week. Okay, everyone, try this. Anyway, thank you, caller, and we will um <laughs> we'll see. By the way, I'm going to give him also bonus points because his prefix is three three three. Yeah. Creepy. That okay. Is creepy. Let's uh, round out the show and tie a bow on this one with. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Oh. Eight eight four five. Um, <clears throat> the oh crap, star. I was gonna say the sun was gonna start to come out. <laughs> star. The news. <laughs> I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it with Truth Smacks Trail Mix Supreme, now infused with peppermint.
Nice. New York, New York. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Line unmuted. That was great. Oh, my God. I Holy see, shit. Hey, I was circuits. calling about the Petro Ruble. The Petro Ruble. No, no, it won't be the Petro Ruble. Yeah. The Petro, Petro Yuan. No. Yuan Petro, or whatever. No. And it, and it was the it was a sterling yen. It's not a pound. Yen. It used no, to be not. the yen is Japanese. It used to be the oh. sterling pound, and then it shifted to the U.S. petrodollar, and Europe fucking fell apart and became a piece of shit. So yeah, we we can look forward to that. That's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah we yeah yeah. yeah. If, if if it is not the dollar, because we are so tied to the dollar. Um, uh, if you guys ever want to watch a uh, a documentary that gives you the, the ramifications of this watch a um, it's from some years back called crude awakening, which leads you into how we are all tied to the oil, not just in, as a resource, but a currency. It is very, mm-hmm. very, very. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. That's it's again, very understated. The fact that the media is not talking about this a lot. Anyway, go ahead, man. What's, what's, uh, what's on your mind? Uh, not much. Uh, it was interesting, the thing about um, uh, Daylight Savings. Dude, I am with you a thousand fucking percent. Pick a fucking time. It, that thing, that fucks, has fucked me up physically every year since I've been alive. I, it, or at least that I've been conscious of the time change. It fucked me up, literally. Yeah. Like, the, the time frame. I, I don't... We need to pick one time. And a lot of states don't do it. A lot of countries don't do it. So why do we do it? Well, Only to well, fuck with our sleep habit. Well, it's not the why we do it, but why we never got off of it. And nowadays, I mean, it was it was inevitable anyway, because there's a lot of kids. I say kids because I'm older. That well, wasn't it allegedly phone... thought up by Franklin for farmers so they could have an extra day, an extra hour of fucking in the field? Well, just get that up a, was... an hour earlier and go to sleep an hour earlier. You don't have to change the fucking clock. I'm going to go with the industry thing that Peanut talked about uh, uh, to us about before the show, which was that for industries, you could you didn't have to turn on the office lights and spend money and lamp oil back in the day when it, and electri- early electricity when electri- electricity was expensive. You could just you know have that extra hour, send people home just before the lights went on and let them deal with it. That's probably it because it's always money. It's always money. But nowadays, again, your it's laptop, always, always your, your PC, your phone, they all adjust automatically. So there's kids that don't even know what the hell it, it's, it's about. It's like they don't even have to do anything. They just wake up. And it's like their phone's already like, set. Why if, am I so tired? And yeah. then when you get the hour back, oh, right. I feel great. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, but right. You, yeah, they don't even realize. If you come from a strong German family who has a, a unhealthy obsession with clocks like mine, there's freaking <laughs> grandfather clocks everywhere. Oh my gosh. Then yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Precision made clock. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I gotta do this again. And then you you know full well you missed one. You know, it's not like back to the future the opening scene of Back to the Future, but it's still bad. It's not <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god, Mark. I can imagine all the clocks. <laughs> and then they go off and one wait where's the one I missed? I hear it. I fucking hear it. <laughs> I'm staring shit. at like okay. six of them right now, not including my computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> not good. Uh, <laughs> oh man. So yeah, yeah I, 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 don't think other, I don't think other I don't think other countries do it. I think we're the only ones that do it. No, no, nope. Other countries, I I think was there maybe one or two countries in Europe still do it or did it, but pretty much it. we're the only schmucks that do it. I don't know. It probably yeah. is based on the industry. I thought it, I had heard that it was Franklin came up with it for the farmers. So I don't no, know. No. First, George, oh, uh, Peanut, I, I, Peanut's on top of it. George Hudson invented modern daylight savings, proposing it first in 1895, and it was first used in Canada in 1908. Germany did it. We'll see if anyone else dropped it. But whatever. Anyway, what else going Germany on? Germany did got, it. Uh, we got Can- a couple Canada minutes. was first? 
a couple minutes. Oh. Um, uh, not not much. Just stupidness went out again. Every time I go out, these people still have fucking masks on. It's ridiculous. I don't understand it'll, why their it'll, obsession. It'll, oh, they'll take a month. I don't eventually. think it's gonna go away. Uh uh-uh. uh. These people. There was. Oh, by the way, I, got, I have to they mention, I have to mention love this because this was this was from your neck of the woods. So Kyrie Irving, you know, he still can't play for the. Uh, um, uh, the Brooklyn Nets, it's Brooklyn, right? That um, yeah. he can't play for him because, you know, he, he can't play for home games because he won't take the shot yet. And so he, but he can show up in the stands. He can buy a ticket and sit sit next to the team. And so, but he poked his head in the locker room and they fined the team $50,000. What was amazing was oh my God. The, whole arena, the whole arena was mask free. And, and it was like, what the hell? You find us? It's like, so he can sit next to us in an entire arena full of no masks. And yet he walks in the locker room for two seconds and you find him fifty thousand you find us fifty thousand dollars. It was absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, uh shout outs go. See, and and fifty and fifty thousand dollars is is nothing to them. That's purely a statement just to yep. remind sheeple to yep. stay in line. Yep. Shout That's outs, twenty is. seconds. Uh Mark Sargent, Karen B, myself, uh people in the chat, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I hate everybody, so fuck it. <laughs> there, there's that. We'll be here next week. Same flat time, same flat channel. Say good night, Karen. Good night, Karen. Say good night, Zulu. Good night, Zulu. And Hot with sex. that, <laughs> really, really going to throw that in? You're going to do that before I can say it. Fine. Sorry. Hot, that's right. Fine. Fight show. Whatever. Sex. Just sex. Period. Good night, everybody. Good stuff. (laughs)